Well, big tech making big bets on powering artificial intelligence. Two nuclear energy CEOs who made deals with Google and Amazon both recently joined Yahoo Finance, weighing in on the importance of the shift to nuclear. The need for power, uh, particularly for, for data centers has, centers, has kind of changed the dynamic um, really in the last you know, year to year and a half from, from where it was. Um, it's kind of changed the landscape uh, for energy. Um, we've kind of gone from kind of a, a stagnant, uh, you know, stagnant growth to to really kind of needing a lot, new, a lot of new capacity. And the big news from last week was not just Amazon saying, if someone else builds it, we will come buy the power. Amazon said we are prepared to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in the construction of these plants. That's the game changer. And that's what's really going to facilitate this new build era. And the U.S. government is jumping in, too, to the tune of up to $900 million in grants to support some of this development. Joining us now, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm to talk more about this. Secretary Granholm, thank you uh, for being with us. We have been watching this nuclear trend quite closely here. You know, a lot of these projects are long term. They're years out. So how are you thinking about strategically how they should fit into the energy picture, particularly with all of this need to power AI data centers? Yeah, I mean, well, we first of all, we know that AI data centers are being built and they're not going to happen overnight either. So a lot of the hyperscalers, as we call them, are doing power purchase agreements with utilities to be able to get them across the finish line. But ultimately, we want the data, the data centers to be powered by clean energy ad additional to what is already on the grid. So we're telling the tech companies to BYOP, bring your own power. Many of them have committed, all of them have really committed to clean power. So that's very exciting. Nuclear power is clean. And they're very excited about these small modular reactors. You had the Cairo CEO on. He has a small modular, a next generation reactor. And those are able to attach essentially to a data center, or at least to be uh, virtually connected to a data center to be able to power that center with clean base load power, not intermittent power. And so it's very, you know, we're excited about this movement. And Madam Secretary, why is it taking so long, so many years to bring mm -hmm. these reactors online? And do you think there's anything regulators can do to step in, help speed up that process? Well, it is true. I mean, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is really working on streamlining the process, but it's less uh, about that so much as it has been about people willing to place orders for these small modular reactors. We just had a couple of reactors come online in Georgia. These are the big reactors. They're called AP-1000s. Um, and People were watching that, but it's hard with new technology to get to um, commercialization unless you have an nth of a kind experience. And so nobody wants to be the one to buy the first one. Well, if all of these tech companies sort of band together and not ask for different designs from different, you know, different specifications, but if they can, can agree on basic power, then you can order a six pack or a 12 pack of these small modular reactors to be able to power your data centers. Many of them are interested in that and they're now starting to do that. These announcements that you've seen over the past couple of weeks, amazing, not just with Kairos, but you've seen Google also at uh, Microsoft, excuse me, with Three Mile Island. Uh, so. And these, I, I will say this, these um, hyperscalers are also partnering on other kinds of clean energy, like geothermal energy, which is the heat beneath our feet. I was just... Uh, I, I was just in Texas, and Google is also looking at solar, and they will pair that with uh, batteries eventually. So all of these different experiments are happening, but there is a real consensus among these big tech companies that they should be bringing their own power with them. Yeah, it definitely seems to be an all-of-the-above approach when it comes to the kinds of power that they're drawing from. I just want to linger on nuclear for one more moment, though, because the small modular reactors, there is some skepticism around them um, maybe partly from a science perspective, but it seems like more so from a cost perspective because nuclear historically, the big scale nuclear that you were talking about, has been so expensive and has taken so long and has been so difficult to build. What's your level of confidence that these SMRs are going to be realistic and viable and sort of what's the administration willing to do to, to help that along? 
Yeah, I mean, this is where the role of government is so important, right? In early stage technologies, partnering to be able to bring down the capital costs of these investments. We are less concerned in traditional SMRs about the technology, at more concerned about getting orders placed. And once you do get a couple of them built, then really the nth of a kind where you can really take it to scale, that happens. So all of this demand is occurring right now. And so we we are grateful to the hyperscalers that are willing to take, you know, to take a, a shot at going going nuclear with some of these SMRs. That will bring down the cost of the technology as long as we can scale it. How comfortable do you think Americans are having these reactors in their communities? I'm curious about that. Um, whether you think actually there, there might need to even be some kind of, you know, education campaign to get Americans comfortable to convince them that yeah. the technology is safe, secure. Yeah, it's such a good question. We have a, a gold standard in the United States for nuclear safety. And the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, one of the reasons why they do take their time in licensing is because they want to make sure it is safe. And, and they should. But with respect to communities, every community is going to be different. There are some communities that are comfortable with nuclear because they've got some of these big reactors. In fact, we have about 94 big reactors in the country on about 50, a little over 50 sites on those sites, there are there's plenty of room for more reactors to be built, whether they're small or large. They may be already permitted for large or small reactors. That will cut through the red tape like this. If you can go to a site and build on it, and it's adjacent to transmission, that is why we're telling the data the data center companies that we can help provide sites. We they can get extra. Uh, tax incentives if they are part of a former energy community you can get like basically if you if you buy one smr you can get the second one for free essentially based upon the tax credits uh, of uh, location and production of nuclear energy in an energy former energy community maybe attached to a, a former coal plant uh, uh, there's a lot of incentives to make this happen Finally, just to broaden it out a little bit, because we are expecting this big uptick in demand because of data centers, among other things, how concerned are you that the sort of energy transition is being delayed to some extent? I mean, we're talking about all these renewable um, sources, but there's also a big need right now. As we know, oil and gas industry in this country is producing at record levels in part to try to fuel some of this natural gas, a big part of that. So how are you thinking about where we are on the timeline versus where you might want to be? It is amazing what is happening out there because of the Inflation Reduction Act. So this year, in 2024, we will basically be adding 30 Hoover Dams worth of clean power to the electricity grid because of those incentives that are making it irresistible for de developers to get clean generation on the grid. That is twice as much as last year. That broke a, a record last year. It's breaking records this year. It's going to do the same next year. The trajectory for the next 10 years because of the Inflation Reduction Act is very encouraging. So I'm not worried about us being able to add the power that we need. Uh, I want to make sure we've got the transmission grids to take that on. And I'd like to see more types of power like uh, nuclear. Secretary Granholm, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time. You bet. Thanks so much.